and welcome. My name is Sonia Gavankar McKay, Director of Digital Strategy at Axiom Space. Here in just a few moments, we'll have a live conversation with Commander Michael Lopez Alegria and AX3 pilot Walter Villaday, who, along with Alper Gezerovce and Marcus Wandt, are well into their first week aboard the International Space Station. The AX3 mission is Axiom Space's third endeavor to the orbiting laboratory, and this crew has over 30 scientific studies on their schedule. This morning, the teams have been troubleshooting the signal from the station through the KU band, but I'm being told we should be okay to get a few moments with MLA and Walter. Commander, it's so good to see you. Where in the world, or should I say where over the world are you right now? First, where in the station am I? I am in the Kibo module, also, also known as the Japanese pressurized module, where a lot of the science experiments are. As you look at me, traveling that way is far left, and that's straight ahead. If you're seeing me, it looks like my video. And then, as far as over the world, he asked my colleague Walter. Oh, nope. Walter. Oh, here he comes, floating into view. Oh, Walter's looking out the window for an update on where over the world we are. There's a lot of uh, sea over here, I guess. And we are flying uh, over the South, of the south of Ocean, Pacific Ocean. Amazing. Yeah. A lot of blue. So there's a lot of water out there, you may have heard. I have heard these things about our planet. I, I love that Walter really gives us a, a view of how big the space is. I, I guess I didn't realize how much area you have to work in there in that module. Walter, it's good to see you too. You're looking fantastic in microgravity, settling in well. Yeah, it's good to see you. It's been uh, great to work over these days. We have been doing a great job, a lot of experiments and activities. Amazing to be over here. Well, I know this week has been full for you. We got to speak to you, Commander, a couple of days ago, full of work that you're doing in this early days. What has stood out for both of you? Walter, you first. Well, it's a completely different uh, environment over here. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of uh, daily activities that really looks like very different from our normal uh, uh, options we have on the ground. So, I mean, one of the things, for instance, is uh, is a food. Is uh, just to eat over here is a completely different experience. And uh, I guess so. We may show you something. For instance, uh, this one is the way in which we can uh, consume water. It's uh, just an empty bottle that we need to uh rehydrate with uh, some water and by the way all the water is uh, recycled inside the station and then once we filled up we can uh, i'll drink this because this is see this is monogram oh for it's it's your personal drinking water michael that's so let's let's see what it looks like to drink you have to look around for a straw right yeah walter's gonna grab the straw while he's doing that i'm going to um Tell you so this is um most of our food comes packaged like this whether it needs to be heated or not this happens to be banana pudding ooh, i'm going to demonstrate here in a minute if it's I, a hot I, food you basically put it in an oven and between a couple of uh, like spring butter plates and it heats up then it's just a simple matter of cutting it open and eating it i say simple yeah, they were floating uh, the here. <laughs> they were floating out of you. Michael, I like that you said it seems simple, but really space is hard, right? It's it, Nothing is simple while you're floating in microgravity, I would assume. And does that go for the research that you're doing as well? It, it must be just as difficult to negotiate how you're moving your body and moving test tubes. Everything you do is it just takes a lot more time because when you get to a, your work site or where, wherever you happen to be doing, you have to figure out how to stabilize yourself first. Every every time you touch something, 
it pushes off of you with the same force as you push into it. So it's it's really, it takes, even typing on a keyboard, believe it or not, is enough force to push yourself away. So it is it is a challenge. You're absolutely right. So I will show you in the meantime, the water coming out, it creates a bubble and then you actually don't need to follow Behind the bubbles, you can jump the sip from the straw. Here, I'm going to take my um, hand, I mean, my container of banana pudding, which I won't show you because it doesn't look very good. <laughs> Bonogram spoon. This is, the, this is the only utensil we use up here besides the scissors. And um, dip it in there, and it's like banana pudding. You know, you watching you eat this one makes me very hungry two makes me wonder about table manners do you have table manners in microgravity because like what's up what's down what's the top of the table do you have to worry about those things well interesting you say that person we have a table but we don't use it really that much except to tap stow our utensils but to get them up and down do a quick demonstration here. So Walter's going to stand still. Oh my. Uh oh. Looks like we have a loss of signal. Uh, we have lost the signal with our crew. This can happen for a couple of reasons, but most likely because the ISS is passing between satellites and that handover can cause a drop in communications. I'm hearing that we will likely need to finish our call through audio only. So let's give that a try and press ahead. Commander and Walter, um, in the few minutes that we have left, let's try and continue our conversation, though we won't be able to see you. Now, you and Walter seem like you're having a whole lot of fun together right now. When you're doing your research, though, I would imagine you're in different parts of the space station focused on that really aggressive schedule you have, do you ever get to come together or do you just save it for moments like this when you get to call down to folks like us and your families? It's some of that, but I would say we generally get together at mealtimes, um, especially dinner. Sometimes lunch, sometimes our lunch periods are staggered, but usually dinner we, we are scheduled together, which is nice. A little bit like a family to catch up on how the things are going and you're right. A lot of people are doing a lot of different things. I'm looking through the um, end of the the other end of the Japanese experiment module into Columbus, and I see Marcus. He's wearing a like a VR goggle sort of thing. Earlier today, he was wearing some kind of crazy EKG. I mean, E E um, electroencephalogram cap. And yesterday, he was working some robotic thing. Today, Walter had an event with the. Prime Minister of Italy a couple days ago, uh, Alfred had one with the President of Turkey, so it's it's crazy up here. We're super busy, but we're having a great time. I can imagine it. So what's next on the schedule today? What's what's coming up next on that red line for you today? Toward the end of our day here, we work on GMT or UTC, so it's a little after 6 p.m. And so we'll be um, heading into our preparing for evening, they call it evening prep for work, and then um, a daily planning conference. So in that, we talked to Houston, Huntsville, Munich, Scuba, and Moscow. And then we'll have a similar call with uh, just with the Axiom Mission Control Team a little bit after that. And Walter, what are you looking forward to over the next couple of days? Well, there are a couple of interesting experiment, experiments are coming up. Uh, this morning, I started to try a new suit that we are uh, uh, manufacturing in Italy. It's a kind of a smart suit integrating uh, new fabrics with new sensors. And this is one uh, of the experiments very interesting. But we have been talking about food. We are also doing some experiments about pastas. So for the new space station, uh, I hope we may provide some kind of Italian pasta. And so we are testing the way in which uh, pasta can be prepared and tested and then how your tastes are changing up here. Are you doing just pasta or is there sauce as well? Because I, I'm worried about the red sauce. I'm very clumsy in our gravity. I can't imagine a red sauce in microgravity. 
You are uh, absolutely right. I mean, pasta is the first step, and the second step will be develop some uh, tasty but uh, healthy uh, sauces. So, step by step, we'll approach, and in the end, we're going to have a full Italian uh, pasta meal uh, up here. Sounds excellent. Well, on behalf of your teams here at Axiom Space, those in Turkey, Sweden, Italy, and Isa, keep up the great work. I look forward to the next time we get to connect. Thanks, always a pleasure to have you guys on board with us and we'll see you next time. Well, unfortunately, we weren't able to have as much video with Commander MLA and Walter as we would have hoped due to some downlink issues because space is hard. However, what we did learn is that the crew is doing well and has a packed daily timeline tackling research projects for their nations and the European Space Agency, as well as conducting outreach engagements for organizations around the world. Axiom Space is dedicated to expanding access to low Earth orbit for countries like Italy that see this opportunity as a whole of country endeavor in space for the purposes of science, development and innovation. You can learn more about the full portfolio of over 30 mission research projects in the days to come when the entire AX3 crew speaks live, hopefully, with Axiom Space Chief Scientist Lucy Lowe from Space to Ground. Stay tuned to Axiom Space on social media for a tune-in alert on how to join us. Go AX3.